Well, I want to say hello to all my friends at the Cisco Learning Network. We are back with another video in our series on... What is it? <laughs> on IPv6. Yeah, I should just look behind me here, right? On IPv6 for CCNAs. When we left off last time, we went ahead and we discussed how IPv6 is going to be utilizing an address that's quite different from the IPv4 address that we're used to. We're typically looking at that 32-bit address in IPv4 that we represent in dotted decimal notation for us humans. And when we get to the IPv6 world, it's behind me here, let me get out of the way, we're going to be dealing with that 128-bit address that is represented as hexadecimal. We said that each hexadecimal character represents four bits. There's four of those characters in a section, that's 16 bits in a section, and then there are eight, right? There's eight of those sections, eight times 16, giving us the 128 bits. Okay, great. Well, in this particular video, we are gonna focus on the address representation. Specifically, we're going to focus on the fact that this address right here, this address, uh, it's pretty cumbersome, isn't it? I mean, do they give us any ways in which we can represent these addresses more briefly, an easier way for us to handle them? And you probably guessed the punchline here, yes, there is. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Here I've got an IPv6 address for us, and I'm going to demonstrate the various properties of you representing this particular address. Now the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to see that these hexadecimal characters, they are not case sensitive. So that's the first point we want to make in this video. We can say two zero, lowercase c, and then a one. That's no problem. So the first point I want you to have mastered, these are not case sensitive. Okay, the second point that I want you to grasp here is that we can trim in any one of the fields, we can trim off the leading zeros. So in this field of all zeros, for instance, I can trim off the leading ones and I can just do a zero. Hey, I like it, saving me some typing. Then we've got 130F, I can do 130F. And then, look at this, we've got eight zeros in a row. This happens a lot in the addresses and here's our third address representation technique. Once, and only once, in one of these addresses, you can go ahead and you can represent all of these successive zeros with a colon colon. What a cool trick. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to say colon colon for all those eight zeros. Awesome. Once in an address, folks, don't try and cheat. Don't try and do it more than once. Your computer will spit it out. All right, next up here, we're going to, in this next field, do a 9C0. Great, we trimmed off the leading zero. Then we'll do an 876A. And finally, a 130B. So it's not like totally shorter to use that valley girl expression, but notice that it is considerably more succinct using these techniques. What were those techniques that we mentioned? Well, number one, we don't have case sensitivity on the hex characters. Number two, we can trim off any leading zeros in one of the sections. Number three, 
once in the address and only once we can use colon colon to represent the successive zeros and uh, number four. No, well, there was no number four, was there? Yeah, no case sensitivity, trim off the leading zeros and the zero and the colon colon trick once within an address. You can get some really interesting results here right? You can have an address that looks like this, FF01 colon colon one. Yeah, there was a whole bunch of zeros in that address. We got to, and they were consecutive. We got to trim them all off with that technique. You could end up with colon colon one, all zeros in the address except for the one at the end. And then if a machine doesn't have an IPv6 address yet, and it wants to get one maybe from DHCP, you could literally just have a colon colon representing the address. Pretty cool. You got to really like the shorthand when you get to that, right? Instead of typing out all of those zeros. Are your computer systems going to be down with this? Well, they sure are. I mean, if we go over to one of our Cisco routers, for example, and we go into an interface, I'll go into interface fast ethernet zero slash zero, for example, and I say IPv6 address, and I say 2001 colon colon one, it'll totally respond to this. It'll understand these shorthand methodologies. As a matter of fact, let me do like, 34, so we trimmed off some leading zeros, 34, then our colon, colon, one. It'll totally accept this shorthand. By the way, you gotta put in the subnet mask, and we do that in IPv6 in prefix notation, we call it. No such thing as like the 255, 255, 255, all that stuff for the subnet mask. In this particular technology, it's really cool, we just use the prefix notation. So I'm gonna tap enter and you can see the machine took that and didn't give us an error message. If we do show IPv6 interface brief, we can see that it even itself represents it in the nice shorthand. So your devices are gonna be very conscious of these address representation shortcuts that we could take. So, pretty cool. In this video, we looked at the case insensitivity, we looked at the leading zeros in a field that are optional, and we looked at the successive fields of zeros being represented as colon colon, but we know that is only once in an address. Folks, I wanna thank you so much for joining me here at the Cisco Learning Network in this series of videos we're doing. I remember the title now, it's IPv6 for CCNAs. I hope you'll join me next time where we're gonna cover some other really cool stuff about this IPv6 protocol that you as a CCNA should know.